Tashdev, who likes to do things in style, if the latest hospital that he has built is any proof of that. So, IOL implantation, dialing off in style, Dr. Mike Pal Sachdev. Thank you very much, Dr. Rupal, for the kind introduction, uh, Professor Lahane, Kumar, and I'll wish to give you the last uh, thing that you do when you're uh, done or completed with the cataract surgery, and that is the implantation of the intraocular lens, which uh, is the goal. So basically, no cataract surgery, as you are aware, uh, is complete without putting an intraocular lens, because this is what actually gives the visual uh, restoration. And it is today that the patient is demanding uh, near ebetropia and also independence of glasses. So therefore, the IOL needs to go in well, and that is what you need to look at. Ever since the first uh, uh, description of the IOL by Sir Harold Ridley, the lenses have undergone significant changes. And as you can see that there are now several lenses which are there. The standard of care is pretty much a single piece lens. Uh, people are tending to move towards the hydrophobic uh, acrylic uh, lens which is there. But then you have the hydrophilic, the silicon, etc. that is there. Those, these are different types of lenses that are available. Now, when you started with these lenses, they were non-foldable or rigid lenses. And from the rigid lenses, though in Indian circumstances, they are still being used because of the lower cost. Uh, the majority of the lenses that are used in paid surgeries are the foldable lenses. Earlier, the foldable lenses, the obvious advantage of a foldable lens is that you can go through a smaller incision. And when people were using the foldable lens, the foldable lens was used with a holder and folder. But today, when you are looking at a foldable lens, you are using an injector system because it makes the incision small. It allows you a regulated opening of the lens. Now, whenever you are working with a foldable lens, normally uh, I'll be talking about the preloaded lenses, but there are lenses where you have a metal a plunger where uh, you have to push it, but then there is a disposable cartridge. So you can see that this is the cartridge and this is the area wherein the lens has to go in. I'll be showing you as to how exactly we do this. And this is the injector system which you have, which is autoclavable and you have a rounded capsular friendly uh, dimensions that are there which pushes the lens uh, at the haptic optic and then this is what goes into the eye to give you a gentle insertion. Now one important thing that you have to look for any lenses is that if the lens is opening like an S, this is wrong. So this is normally an upside down insertion. So the lens should normally be opening as an inverted S which is showing. So this is what you have to see at the time when the lens is opening or also at the time of loading in the injector system. Can I have the audio? Yeah. To load the Enfolder Platinum 1 series cartridge, first remove the cartridge from the inner tray and fill with Helon viscoelastic. Next, grasp the lens with your forceps by the optic edge only and hold the cartridge with the IOL diagram facing up. Engage the lead haptic with the canopy and sweep the lead haptic over the optic body in one motion, leaving half the optic inside the cartridge. Ensure that the lead haptic is fully tucked over the optic body. Grasp the trailing haptic and tuck it over the optic body. Advance the lens past the line marked on the cartridge. Ensure that the lens and haptics remain folded in place after removing your forceps. Next, insert the cartridge bevel tip so that it slides into the handpiece cartridge slots. Push down firmly on the back end of the cartridge to securely snap into the handpiece. If the rod tip makes contact with the cartridge, the cartridge has not been inserted correctly. Retract the rod and ensure that the cartridge is fully snapped into the handpiece before moving forward. Okay, so this is uh, the important things that you have. The precaution is that you have to check the alignment of the plunger, which is very important that the plunger should be hitting the lens. It should not be underriding the cartridge, nor should it be overriding. And that could cause a problem. So you first have to check the movement before you go into the eye, which is very important. It is bad to actually enter the eye and then see that the movement is not correct. Now, what important thing that you have, there are some people who do it under uh, infusion, but I personally prefer to put the lens under an inflated bag and you need to have a good viscoelastic that is there. The push on the 
injector system should be gentle. Now there is a push type and there is a screw type. My personal preference is a screw type because it opens or unfolds the lens very gently and sometimes when you are doing with a push there may be a sudden jerk and we have uh, injured the capsules and caused rents just by this sudden jerk of the, uh, of the uh, injector system onto the lens. Now, as was uh, told earlier for the marking of capsulorexes, if you are working with a toric lens, you have to do the marking and that is something which is very important. Multifocal lens insertion are also similar. Now, there are newer systems which you have to do, which, uh, which you have. Now, you can see this is the Callisto system that we use. This is a femto laser that has been done. And with this, uh, with the pre-op, uh, despite the patient being lying down, this is for a toric lens that you have, uh, the incision. Once the incision, you can see that this is the mark also, but this is the uh, three lines that come for the orientation of the intraocular lens. So the Callisto system will give you the orientation of the lens as to where exactly the lens has to be. So you can see that this is the lens that is being injected very gently. Once it is injected, you can see that this has to be rotated. So you can see this is the line here and you need to now rotate. So you can see that this is the rotation that you have and this is falling in the middle of these three lines. So this is the uh, systems that you have nowadays to get better orientation with a projection system which can be markerless that you have. Now let us look at insertions of IULs. If you look at the insertion of the IUL, which is the movie which is running just now, you can see that this is the right way because you have to gently turn your hand when the IUL is opening. So it is like a cauliflower that it is opening. But if you look at the other side, uh, which is being seen in this particular case, you will see that the opening is not the person, the doctor is not opening it properly. And you can see that this is a, a stuck, you can see that this is stuck. And because it is stuck, you can see that the lens is turning the other way. So that is the biggest problem. So you have to be within the incision as to the type when you are looking at. Now these are just preloaded systems which I'll just skip through because of paucity of time. So you can see these are preloaded systems which are there. And in this you don't have to pick the lens and put it. So you just put the viscoelastic into the area which is marked and you kind of take this out, uh, the plunger system and then you have the a whole thing which is preloaded. So what this does is that it is a single use and it remains sterile throughout so you don't have a problem as regard insertion uh, or folding of the IOL which is there. So you can see this is the preloaded system which is there and there is no rotation of the injector that is required. Now there are commonly uh, encountered problems that you have. So you can see in this particular case, uh, this is somebody who is doing new, the, the incision is uh, small and as the incision is small, you can see in this particular case, the person is not actually opening the lens properly. So what is happening is that if you see here, the lens is actually getting stuck in the incision. So you have to be very careful that the lens is opening inside the incision and not within the incision. So you see you have a stuck lens here. Can you see this? The lens is stuck here and the person has withdrawn the injector cartridge and has not opened it properly. So you end up in a problem in this particular case. Now at times you have the two haptics which, is, uh, which don't separate very well so you need to wash away the viscoelastic and you can look at separating them. Now you also have the systems, this is the final video, you have systems, can I have the uh, audio please? Okay, I don't know why the video is not working. Anyway, this was the last, so now you have what is known as systems within the machines wherein it is said as to how much the lens would move in and how much the lens would not move in and you can actually put the speed at which the lens is going to be pushed by the plunger system. This is called as the auto cert, which has come in the Alcon machine. So uh, this is uh, another system that is there. So friends, suffice to say that you have to have the proper instruments, the proper gadgetry, and you need to have the know-how for putting the IOL properly into the position that is there. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you.